Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brendan Hauser with Evoke Bike. So it's going to be hill climb season before we know it. And even if you're not doing hill climb races, there's probably going to be some KOMs that you want to snatch up, especially the tough coveted ones in your town. So as we get towards fall and it's KOM hunting season, hopefully these tips will help you get faster and get some uh, get on the top of the leaderboard for some of those. So what I want to touch on in this video is the four biggest physiological determinants of your success in hill climbs, and then really looking at anaerobic versus aerobic training, which is more important for these, and that relates to the second part, the duration of the course. We're going to break that into three different sections to help you really fine-tune the training, and then pacing, which is absolutely paramount paramount for success in these events and then quickly touch on season planning and really I'm probably a couple months behind on posting this so this will definitely be more helpful and a really big picture if you're doing these in 2024. So the four biggest physiological determinants for your success, number one, no doubt, VO2 max, your aerobic capacity. If you're new to cycling, you may not be aware that your aerobic pathways that produce energy have far less fatigue and metabolites and that ow feeling when you go hard if you can produce energy aerobically as opposed to anaerobically. So two riders putting out the same wattage, weighing the same, if one has a better aerobic capacity, they will last longer than the one with more anaerobic power. That being said, the second most important thing is your anaerobic power and not only your maximum wattage that you can produce anaerobically, but the duration, which you might hear some people call anaerobic stamina, anaerobic capacity. There's a few different terms that get thrown around. Third, since you're climbing and oftentimes at a lower cadence, muscular strength, you sometimes hear, I just had to like muscle through that, especially if you hit some short, steep hill climbs, and this is also very important if you live in an area like I do where there, 10% is not steep, 15%, pretty steep, 20% brutal. You need muscular strength because if you never pedal at 60 RPM and then you're doing it in a race, you'll be able to get through those, but they will zap your legs much faster. So even on short races, muscular strength will have a place in your training. And we'll talk about some of that in relation to the duration of the courses. This is all interwines together. And then lastly, number four, one of the most important things in cycling is your functional threshold power. And because a lot of times threshold power is related to VO2 max power, the higher your threshold, not always. <laughs> those athletes that have a very close 5 and 20 minute power probably need to do more anaerobic training, but those with a high lactate threshold, it's such a big determinant in how we produce energy that this is going to be important to train. So when we look at this, anaerobic or aerobic, again, aerobic training and aerobic energy production has way less fatigue and metabolites than anaerobic training. That being said, anaerobic power is that quick burst that might last 30 seconds, and those surges are what you need when you're doing these hill climbs. So let's look at the three durations I broke these down into, and there might be more um, if you want to get really nitty gritty. A short, I would say two to three minutes, is going to be mostly anaerobic power and your strength. So if your main goal is a two to three minute KOM or two to three minute hill climb, make sure you have a high amount of anaerobic power and you're strong that you can hit a really hard, big gear. Now, if it's more of a medium duration, let's say five minutes to 10 minutes, this is going to be more VO2 max and then what you'll hear, anaerobic stamina, that anaerobic power, but that you, you can do for a longer period of time, like your 90 second interval, your two minute interval, not so much the 30 second max wattage. And if we want to get nitty gritty, and maybe I'll put this into the blog, we could look at WKO and look at their eye levels and how they break it down. They get very granular and that can be helpful if you're really trying to fine tune this. But I think this big picture can help you hone in and get more specific with your training. And then I would say on the longer end of time trial, excuse me, hill climbs, I started thinking of my next sentence when I said time trial, longer 10 to 20 minute VO2 max and FTP. And then if we're going beyond 20 minutes, that's really more of a time trial classically. And I have a blog about pacing those and we can talk about that at some other point. One quick note on these watts per kilogram, very important in cycling. And you're going to hear a guy, a pro athlete come on and he went in the podcast was like, is it okay if I talk about being lean? Because I think that's 
taboo in cycling. And while watts per kg is not everything, I'm an 81 to 82 kg athlete, 80 if I'm like fibbing, I can still outclimb some athletes. And I've had KOMs against Landry where he said, dude, that's crazy. Your watts per kg are lower, but you took that KOM from me. And there are times when it's where you put out the watts and when do you go anaerobic that will make you faster on a course and if the gradients are shallower then raw wattage sometimes beats out watts per kg so why am i mentioning this because don't get too psyched out when you're looking at your competition in strava you still have to show up on race day and execute okay and that leads us into pacing do not start too hard. I was always told the first three rules of a time trial, this applies to a hill climb, don't start too hard, don't start too hard, and don't start too hard. So the biggest reason, and shout out to Tom Bell who told me about this, is what's really called the oxygen deficit. And you can look more in detail on this, and Tom has a blog going into this on his website, where you'll use more anaerobic power earlier on when you're not super warmed up and already into an effort. And so you're going to create more fatigue and metabolites, meaning you might produce the same amount of watts, but you're going to die earlier. That's obviously a bad thing. And this is going to slow you down big time. If you are riding at FTP on a short or medium course hill climb, by the end, you've gone too hard. You want to be finishing hard. So it's much wiser and faster to finish strong when you're able to use more aerobic power and then your anaerobic power. So let things, let your aerobic system get really turned on and then crush it later on. So the other obvious point to this is we all feel incredible when we're fresh. We all feel amazing in that first one minute. Always be realistic. You and me, I should say we, not you. When we show up on race day, we magically don't have another 50 watts. So if you looked at your pacing, you've done your planning, you've figured out what is a good time, what's your wattage, and you're doing 50 watts more, we're gonna pay for that later on. So don't fall into that easy trap, stick to your plan. And the blog has more information on looking at my wind sock and you know basic things like look at what the winning times were, where do you slot in, what wattage have you done before this, and then how does the course affect your wattage. Putting out flat watts is most often the fastest way to pace yourself through a hill climb. The times that you want to alter that is if there's a steep gradient to start where you need to get over that and then maybe the watts go a little bit lower. But for the most part, you don't want huge swings and wattages. That is not the fastest pacing. And then the last piece to keep this video relatively short so you can take the information and run with what you need. Season planning. So let's say you start in September. And as I said before, I'm probably a few months late in this. You definitely want to be hitting your VO2 max work. And this hopefully has been going on in your training since May. And if you really look at, you could do three months of the summertime, May, June, July, with VO2 max as your focus. And you might also be a road racer, so you're racing. So you could have one hard VO2 max focus session, you're racing, and then you're doing a bunch of endurance in between that. Now, when you hit July, Continue this progression, but also start to look at the duration of your main goals and say, do I need more of that anaerobic power and strength? Do I need to continue the VO2 max with some more longer anaerobic, the anaerobic stamina? Or is this really more going to be almost like a time trial and I need to be focused on FTP work? Maybe I'm doing more over-unders to supplement my VO2 max work. This is when you kind of start to fine tune because you're eight weeks away from the start of race season. So as you do that, move into August, you're four weeks out from the start of races. This is just like road racing, bring down the volume of your endurance training. You've built this up months and months and months of training. Okay. And now you're really starting to hit the hard anaerobic sessions. And again, where does the anaerobic training apply to the duration of your main goal races? You're hitting the VO2 max sessions. You're coming into those with a ton of energy, meaning you need to focus on a ton of rest. And it goes without saying, and I'm going to put out a big picture training uh, guide with some little details of a sentence like this. You are super serious about your training right now. If you're doing hill climbs and you're in April, 
you should be less serious about it. And this, I've never verbalized this because I had an athlete that asked me, and I felt like I put this in other videos, but I can't think that everyone's going to watch every video. That would be foolish of me. That base season can kind of seem boring at times. You're doing all of these things to create the base of fitness. And without just giving this cheesy sentence, it's explained in other videos, why ride endurance? I need to more explain to people, and I'm not preaching this to you. I'm just saying I think it's a good idea for especially the newer athlete. When do you want to be super serious? When do you want to take this where your friends who don't ride the normies are like, yo, you're kind of obsessed with this bike thing. It's like, yeah, because guess what? I want to win some things. I want to be good at this. So August, that is definitely the time. September, race and recover. And just like road racing, just like any racing, fine tuning. What does fine tuning mean? Look at what your races are going to demand of you. You go to the early races and you don't have that as Colby Pierce was saying, that that's the Colby Pierce emoji I think right now. If you don't have that, you need a little bit more anaerobic training. If you are struggling and doing some sims on weekends when you don't have a race and you're figuring out where in the, are you missing that initial kick? Are you missing the ability to finish strong? And maybe you need to do some more eight and 10 minute intervals. Where, where's the missing link and fill in a session here or there. Hopefully this helps you get faster. Um, if you're new to the podcast, I meant to say this in the beginning, these days are the short, quick, around 10 minute videos that hopefully give you tips for free to get faster and crush your races. If you don't want to hear from me, come back on Tuesdays, world tour athletes, world tour coaches, Olympians, absolute beasts on the bike, the women and men that come on the podcast. I'm so grateful that they are taking their time to share their knowledge, their wisdom, and their experience and give them a shout out. Tell them, thank you for doing this. They don't have to be doing this. I'm obviously not paying these people to come on. I just want to share my love of cycling to hopefully help other people get faster. It's just a super contagious endurance sport. So let's keep getting it. Let's keep building this amazing community. Shout out to everybody in the Discord that's helping each other out. Women and men, y'all are incredible. So let's go get it. And the last thing, leave us a five-star review and follow on Spotify. Thanks for everything you guys do. See you, bye.